In this episode, I'm going to cover the Windows install part 2 of 3. I'm going to start off by installing Android Studio, and then I'll create an Android emulator and run it. Then I'll check it with the Flutter Doctor. To get going, I'm going to go to the Flutter Windows Guide, and I've already installed the Flutter SDK and ran Flutter Doctor in the previous episode, and I'm going to save the editor setup till the final episode. So to get going, I'm going to click, right click on Android Studio and open it in a new tab. Once I have it open in a new tab, I'm going to hit the download button and start the download. It takes a while to download. By the way, I'm going to select OK for the license. It takes a while for the download, so be prepared and be on a fast connection if you can be. So I'm going to execute the download and allow it to execute by clicking yes. And here we go. The wizard is up and running. So I'm going to click next and go through the default setup options. I agree to the license and the location and the default name. And I click install. I'll show the details to see what's going on in the background. Once it's completed, I'll select next and finish and boot up Android. I'll minimize the window so I can see what's going on. So I don't have anything to import from the previous install, so I'll select OK. Android Studio will take a few moments to boot up. And what I want to do when it boots up, I'll check the configure options down at the bottom. So I'll click next on the default setups. And I'll keep everything default to start with. It tells me that the SDK has been downloaded and is up to date, so that's good to go. Once I click finish, I'm at the opening wizard window. So I'm going to click configure at the bottom. There's several options, in particular check for updates is used often. So if I check the SDK manager, I can see that 711 NuGot is downloaded, and the SDK, here are the default tools that are installed. I can install more if I want. In particular, the Intel Haxam Accelerator is one of the options I need to run my emulator with turbo speed. Okay, so I'm all ready to go. I'm going to create a default project so I can get at the AVD manager. So I'm going to say my sandbox project, something simple. You don't have to do anything elaborate here because it doesn't really matter. So let's see, sandbox.gonvertical.com. And by the way, if you want to edit this, over on the right, you can edit the project. So I'm going to edit that and just remove the ending of the project name. You don't have to do that, just an option. So I'm going to click the default setups because it doesn't matter what I'm really running. I'm going to click next on installing requested components and empty re activity. So now the project will bootstrap and take a few moments to load. I'm going to allow access to the OpenJDK. It takes a few moments to, for the project to bootstrap, so be prepared to, for it to wait a few moments while it initially generates the project. I'm going to make the window a little bit bigger to show you the two items that I'm after in this project. And one will be the AVD manager and two, the Android monitor. So the project is booting up. You'll see the windows appear with the source and project on the left. Once it boots up, I'm going to go up to the top right and there's a, a phone with an Android head and it's the AVD manager and that's what I'm after. Once I load that up, I get to the AVD Manager dialog. So I'm going to create a virtual device. And in this configuration, I'm going to select Nexus 5X. You could pick any one of those items on the list there and or have several of them to test with. In this case, in this tutorial, I'm going to select the 5X. So NuGot 86 is downloaded by default. And there are other images you can select from. And they're in the other in the menu. And what I want to do is download the x86-64. I want to show how this is done. So I'm going to click on download. It takes a while to download the image because they're quite large. 
and I'll click next. So be prepared to be on a fast connection and wait a little while during the time it gets extracted. So now that it is downloaded, I'm going to select it. And by the way, down on the lower right, it says recommended Hexam is not installed. Well, I showed earlier that it is installed, but I'm going to go through this at any rate to show how to install it. So uh, you can select the size of memory, and then I'm going to click OK and show the details. The Hexam installer is installed, and I'm going to click Finish. It doesn't change the state there, so I'm going to go ahead and keep on trucking. So I'm going to select GELS 2.0 for hardware acceleration for the graphics and finish. And there we go. The Android emulator is set up. I could go back and repeat the process and set up other Android emulators, but I'm going to launch this one by clicking on the run button. The Android emulator takes a few moments to boot up, so be prepared to wait a little bit while the phone initializes. I'll slide it over to the left for good effect. And if you go down to the right, lower or bottom tab, you can select on the Android monitor. This is a connection between the emulator and the IDE and shows the processes and logging output that are running. So the phone is getting booted up. You can see that it'll start to appear just like a phone would. And there we go. Android emulator is up and running. Now I'm all ready to run my Flutter app on it, but I'm going to show that in the next episode. But before I get there, I want to show one more feature. And let's just reboot this process to show that effect first. So I'm going to go back to Cortana and ask for Android Studio. Click on Android Studio and then load it back up. In this case, it will load up my last project that I was uh, had opened. And if it wasn't, it'll go right to the open wizard and you'll select your project. It's easier to get into this project and select the Android AVD manager. I suspect in the future, there'll be some slick buttons in the Flutter SD, the Flutter IDE. But in the meantime, we can run the AVDs from the AVD manager from a project in Android Studio. Well, at least it's one of the ways. You can run it from command line and other methods as well. But this is one of my favorite ways to get to the AVDs. So there, I've got a, the emu emulator up and running again. So I'll go back. I could create another device and add it to the items. And in this case, I'm just going to click Cancel. And I'm going to close the window for now. Back to the Android monitor, you can monitor the processes and execution paths and console output in this window. Okay, so the Android emulator booted back up. So I could use this process in the, in the Flutter debugging, but I'll cover that in the next episode. But before that, let's go to the Flutter and run Flutter Doctor to see how the output looks. This gives me the statuses of the different sections. In this case, the Android toolchain is installed, the Android Studio is installed, and I have a connected device, which is the emulator. So I'm all ready to go with episode three. We'll come back to this and show how to run. Thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks and I'll catch you later.